Good evening, scholars, parents, guardians, and colleagues in education. Welcome to part one of the Prince George's Community College Dual Enrollment Information Session. The title of tonight's session is, What's the Hoot? Dual Enrollment at Prince George's Community College. Tonight, we're gonna to be discussing the benefits of participating in dual enrollment, how to select courses, how to connect with your dual enrollment representative, and you'll also have the opportunity to hear from a former dual enrollment student and one of our amazing Prince George's Community College Eng English faculty members. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mr. Otu Obad II, and I am another presenter, uh, co-presenter with Mr. Raymond Harad. I am a coach coordinator at Crossland and Frederick Douglass High School, and Mr. Raymond Harad, who you just heard from, he is a coach coordinator as well, um, and he is at Axon High School. Next up, Raymond's going to talk about how do I ask questions during this presentation. Thank you, O2. And to our audience, we want you to be engaged in our presentation on tonight. Tonight, you can join the conversation by uh, asking questions in the YouTube chat. Our dual enrollment uh, team is there to answer your questions. And to make sure you're acclimated with using that chat feature, uh, we're going to do a high school roll call. So take a moment to shout out the high school that you're representing this evening. Come on, let me see those high schools roll in. Let me see those high schools roll in. Who are you representing tonight? Is Oxen Hill in the house? Home of the Clippers? Is Crossland High School in the house tonight? Potomac High School, the powerhouse in the valley? Surrettsville High School. I see Charles Herbert Flowers High School checking in. I see Bowie High School checking in. I see Laurel High School checking in. We see you. Come on, Eleanor. shout out your high schools. Eleanor Roosevelt, I see you checking in again. Oxen Hill. Flowers. Oxen Hill. That's right, Oxen Hill. Go <laughs> Dr. Henry, Dr. Henry Wise is checking in. Surrettsville High School. Go ahead, Surrettsville. That's the school I graduated from. Wise. Dr. Henry Wise, yes. We see you all. Thank you all so much for checking in and shouting out your high schools. Frederick Douglass, O2, that's your school. North yep, Western. Northwestern. Welcome. They're still coming in. Oh, y'all blowing up our chat. Bladesburg. 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 <laughs> that's right. Go Clippers. Clippers pride. Once a Clipper, always a Clipper. I see Oxen Hill representing. Thank you, students, parents, and staff for representing your high schools. We're gonna move into our presentation and uh, Mr. Otu is gonna talk to us about who is eligible for dual enrollment. Otu? All right. I'm sorry. So what is dual enrollment is coming up next. Just waiting for the slide to show. Awesome. Thank you so much, Raymond. So what is dual enrollment? The CCR, which stands for College Career Readiness Act of 2013, Senate Bill 740, establishes a number of requirements designed at increasing college readiness and degree completion in the state. Dual enrollment is an opportunity for high school students to earn college credits. Specific courses qualify for dual credit. For example, English 1010 that is offered at Prince George Community College is equivalent for your 12th grade English credit at your respective high school. Please speak with your coach coordinator, dual enrollment representative, or your professional school counselor for more information. The list for these specific courses are available uh, on, the, on this slide, right here under the list available. That's where you can find the dual credit courses. Also, you can get a list of these specific courses from your course coordinator, dual enrollment representative, and 
and your professional school counselor. Students may not take developmental remedial courses. Your coach coordinator and dual enrollment representative will assist you with this matter. Prince George's County Public Schools will pay tuition for all students duly enrolled in qualified courses. Fees and textbooks will be paid for students who receive free and reduced meals. Those students, we, we have an acronym as FARMS, free and reduced meals. So these, that, that is pertaining to these students that get a free tuition, free fees, and the textbooks are all covered. This form that has to be filled out if you're a free and reduced lunch student should already be on file at Prince George's County Public Schools before the student takes their classes at Prince George's Community College. With that said, Raymond will talk about who is eligible for dual enrollment. So you wanna participate in dual enrollment, do you? Dual enrollment is open to high school students in 11th and 12th grade on the first day of the semester in which the course is offered. This applies to a rising 11th and 12th grade students during the summer semester. Ninth graders, you have to wait just a little bit longer to participate. 10th graders, your first chance of eligibility will be during the summer 2021 semester. So look out for more information in your email soon. Students must have a minimum cumulative grade point average of 2.5 and be in good academic and financial standing with Prince George's Community College. O2, can you tell our guests about the cost of this program? Thank you so much, Raymond. So like I was saying before in the previous slide, tuition is free. I'm gonna say that one more time. Tuition is free. It's, it's instructional services fee is $47 per credit. Registration fee is $25 per semester. Fees and books are the student's responsibility. So roughly, usually classes are about three credits. So that's a roughly around $166 per three credit hour course. Again, as I was stating before in the previous slide, farm students, which is free and reduced meal students, they don't have to pay a dime. Their tuition, their books and their fees are completely covered. Um, again, remember that if you are farms, your application needs to be on file through PGCPS before you can take the classes at Prince George's Community College. Next, Raymond will speak on what's in it for me. Raymond? Thank you, O2. So I wanna put this cost thing in perspective for you. As a disclaimer to this slide, the tuition rates that I will be speaking of are the actual tuition amount for in-county and in-state students for the fall 2020 semester at Prince George's Community College and University of Maryland College Park, respectively. Suppose you're a high school student who wants to eventually earn a bachelor's degree from the University of Maryland College Park. Consider these two paths. The first path is of a dual enrollment student who completes 15 credit hours as a dual enrollment student while in high school, continues on to their associate degree in one and a half years at Prince George's Community College, then transfers to the University of Maryland College Park, completing their bachelor's degree in two years. Notice the total tuition cost is $26,373. That is uh, no tuition, zero tuition cost for dual enrollment participation, just under $5,000 tuition for a year and a half at Prince George's Community College, and just over $21,000 for the final two years that the student might spend at University of Maryland College Park. The second path on the right you'll see might be the path of a student who does not participate in dual enrollment, does not attend Prince George's Community College, but graduates from high school and then goes directly to the University of Maryland College Park to complete their bachelor's degree in four years. This student or parent would spend on average about $16,730 more on tuition alone for a total cost of $43,116 over four years. That's right, this amount does not include room and board. These would be your tuition costs for going directly to, Prince, uh, to University of Maryland College Park. 
don't these numbers alone just make you want to participate in dual enrollment and attend Prince George's Community College? Imagine what you could do with an extra $16,000. You could buy a car, buy 12 MacBook Airs, buy 26 PS5s, 20 pair of Balenciaga sneakers, or even pay a down payment for your new home. In addition to significant cost savings, Prince George's Community College offers many institutional scholarships, including the Prince George's County Promise Scholarship, and we have articulation agreements, agreements with many of the four-year colleges and universities to ensure seamless transfer to your four-year school. If you're interested in learning more about how dual enrollment will impact your transition to college after high school, I wanna invite you to join us for our information session part two on Thursday, October 29th. We'll have more information about that session to follow. I'm gonna turn it back over to O2 who's gonna share some additional information with us. So why dual enrollment? First, be prepared. Dual enrollment program allows high school students to get prepared with various college courses that will enable them to explore their interests early and prepare them for the rigor of college courses. Save time. Students who take college courses while they are attending high school will save time when they go off to their respective two or four year institution. Save money. Students who take advantage of the dual enrollment program have the potential to earn 18 credits or more while they are high school students. How can a student earn 18 credits? I'm glad that you asked. If a student is qualified to take dual enrollment courses the summer before their junior year, they will have six semesters that they can participate in dual enrollment. And if they take one three credit course for each semester, they will have obtained 18 credits, which could potentially meet their first semester requirements at their respective two or four year institution, especially if they attend a college or university in the state of Maryland. The state of Maryland has several articulation agreements with several institutions in the state that will accept these college credits at their respective college or university. Students that wish to attend a higher education institution outside the state of Maryland would be encouraged to reach out to their college and or university to confirm that the courses that they are taking at Prince George's Community College will transfer to that specific institution. Next, Raymond will speak about the student experience. Well, Prince George's Community College is a pathways institution. We had launched this initiative in 2018 to enhance the student experience and speed students up to reach in their, their academic success. It is now easier for students to choose their academic or career options and to be confident that they've made the right choice. Pathways also provide students with a clear map to success in achieving their goals with tools to stay on track and saving time and money. In partnership with Prince George's County Public Schools, there, is also, there are also a number of Prince George's Community College's stu courses that students can take and receive high school credit for. A complete list of these courses can be found on the PGCPS dual enrollment site and then by clicking on Prince George's Community College. New this semester, your course coordinator or PGCC dual enrollment representative will be able to provide course recommendations based on your prospective college majors. Consideration will be given to students who continue their, stu their uh, studies at Prince George's Community College after high school graduation and those who choose to transfer their courses to other colleges and universities. Some of our most popular dual enrollment courses are English 1010 or Introduction to Composition, which is also a dual credit course uh, for English 12, a popular course for many of our students general psychology, general biology, and introduction to business, to name a few. But don't take my word for it. O2, don't we have some students here with us today who want to share their perspective? Yes, Raymond, we do. We do have some students that will share their perspective in reference to dual enrollment. 
in the chat, we have Sam, a graduate of Eleanor Roosevelt High School and general studies at Prince George's Community College, and Jasmine, a graduate of Largo High School and a current student at Prince George's Community College. Mr. Arnaud is a Duval High School graduate and cybersecurity major at Prince George's Community College. At this time, Arnaud will share some of his experiences that he's had being a dual enrollment student. Arnaud? Thank you, Mr. Osu. Hello, everyone. My name is Arnaud, and I'm actually currently still a student at PG. It's my second year. I'll be out spring 2021. So being a dual enrollment student at PG, I can't, it's actually the best decision I've ever made considering the fact that right after high school, I wanted to go straight to Tow Towson. But looking at the factors financially and everything, especially me just growing up with my mom, it was impossible. So I took the decision of coming to PG directly. And I actually started doing roaming late. Well, I was kind of not informed early. So I started late, but I kind of um, caught up. I took two classes, I, um, um, a technology class and an English class. And it actually covered, the English class covered for my English 12. So I, I had extra time in my senior year to help me get my stuff together. And so far it's been great scholarship wise and the community, the group chats, we have some of the best coordinators. They help us every day. Some of them are just my go-to people. Sometimes I don't even go to advisor, I go straight to them. So honestly, coming straight out of high school, if you're not sure what you wanna do, this is actually the best thing for you to do because it gives you time to slow down and actually read think, make mistakes and cover up um, later on. Because I've changed my major a couple of times and it hasn't really affected me because of the way Don Roman is set up in the guidance. And it's actually the best thing. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Arnaud. I do a thank you for coming in and sharing your wisdom and sharing your perspective to prospective students and parents, colleagues and constituents. So again, Arnaud, thank you so much. I learned a lot today. Thank you. With that said, we have Raymond who will speak about the student experience. Oh, too, I first of all wanna echo your sentiments to Arnaud, thank him for his confidence and for sharing his perspective as a former dual enrollment student and a current Prince George's Community College. You'll be able to hear many of the benefits of attending Prince George's Community College as a dual enrollment student and after high, high school graduation. I also want to thank Sam and Jasmine for holding down the chat for us, sharing their perspective as Prince George's Community College students as well. I can't really talk what students have to say in the student experience, but I do want to add that um, to the average class size at Prince George, that the average class size at Prince George's Community College is 18. The average age of our students are approximately 30 years of age. So as dual enrollment students, you are real college students taking real college courses taught by real college faculty members. And on the slide, you actually see an image of an actual dual enrollment student who uh, is sitting in class with real students being taught by a real instructor. One of those uh, faculty members or instructors is a good friend and colleague of mine. And uh, his name is Professor Brandon Wallace. Some of you may have taken him for English 1010. He does teach in the English department at Prince George's Community College. And I wanna invite Professor Wallace to come and share some information with our uh, dual enrollment students from his perspective. Professor Wallace, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, welcome students, welcome parents, welcome administrative team, welcome everybody. My name is Professor Brandon Wallace. I am a product of gorgeous Prince George's County. I went to Kenmore Middle School, I went to Fairmont Heights High School, I went to Bowie State University, and then I went to get my master's from Baltimore. I went to the Johns Hopkins University. And something that's so super special about dual enrollment for me, at least, is I've taught elementary school, middle school, high school, and now I've taught uh, community college and undergraduate experiences and even graduate school. And so I've had a great trajectory of teaching and learning, um, not only within Prince George's County, but also throughout the state of Maryland and nationally also. So I'm excited to be here. I cannot wait until some of y'all are in my class 
Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say for uh, any questions, any specific things you want me to cover. Um, can you talk about what students might expect when they enter into your classroom? Is the work going to be easy? Is it going to be like high school? Can you talk about some of those things? Absolutely. So um, because I taught ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade in Baltimore City, I can tell you that there's been a huge change and a shift from, of course, Common Core State Standards to Career Readiness Standards. And so, yes, the work does get more rigorous. Um, it's supposed to, right? Because it's supposed to be compulsory knowledge. And so where you start is not where you should end up. And so when we, when you come to Prince George's Community College, our greatest hope is that you change. And essentially you're the change that you want to see in your communities, in your life, in your world. And so we do offer a challenge. Um, however, we scaffold, which means just support. We support you every step of the way. And so it doesn't matter where you start. Uh, once you are one of us, once you're one of mine, uh, we make sure that we support uh, uh, wrap some supports around you in the areas of English and reading and writing and grammar, me mechanics, you name it, we got you. And so it really is a good opportunity for you to refine the skills that you may have um, strengthened in high school or may not have strengthened in high school. And so that's what we want to do for you when you get to Prince George's Community College. Professor Wallace, which courses do you teach at Prince George's? I want to sign up for your class. I, I teach all of them. I, I teach all of them. So I will say this before I get into I'm an associate professor at Montgomery College, so I teach in their School of Education. I'm a faculty associate at Johns Hopkins University, so I teach in their School of Education also. And so I teach uh, English coursework at Prince George's Community College and at my alma mater, Bowie State University, from time to time. And so the courses that I teach at Prince George's Community College, English 1010, which is an introductory class uh, to read, uh, writing of sorts, college uh, writing introductory course, uh, 1320, 1340, so business writing, I teach African American literature, uh, you name it, I pr pretty much teach it, uh, and teaching is one of my goals, it's one of my uh, dreams, and so it's a dream job to have, but um, again, I can't say this enough, uh, when you come to Prince George's Community College, we are a family, and as long as you're willing to put in the work, so am I, so are we, we all are. And so in as much as it is your responsibility to do your work, do it on time, submit things like that, we will support you every step of the way. Um, there's never been an opportunity that I have not taken to make sure that I make connections with students, make connections with families, make sure that I'm there holistically for students. And so that's one of the bigger add-ons, if you will, that we do give at Prince George's Community College, specifically, of course, in my department, English. And so we are so excited and um, really ready for you to come on and sign up so that you can join this really amazing dynamic family. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your perspective, Professor Wallace. I love your sentiments today because it puts the community back in Prince George's Community College. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your time. And we know you have to run on to teach or do something else. <laughs> uh, so thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to address our students and parents. We appreciate my it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all soon. See you soon. Take care. Oh, too, can you give our students some and families updates for the spring 21 semester? Yes, thank you so much, Raymond. Well, spring 2021 is ever changing. You're gonna hear that a lot. Given the global pandemic impact of the COVID-19, Prince George's Community College is operating remotely until further notice. All dual enrollment participants are limited to a maximum of, of two courses for the spring term. Students are required to complete at least six credits in person remotely, which is synchronous instru instruction, which Raymond's gonna explain on the next slide, or hybrid in order to qualify for online asynchronous courses, which again, Raymond will explain what synchronous, asynchronous is, hybrid, remotely, and so forth. This will apply for our continuing, continuing dual enrollment students. The spring format, classes are offered as 15 week courses. In addition, we offer two accelerator formats of 12 weeks and seven and a half week sessions. Students that take the accelerated format will be informed by their course coordinator or dual enrollment representative that the accelerated format will cover the same amount of information in a shorter amount of time as a full 15 week course. Just a reminder, the spring start date for a 15 week course will be Tuesday, January 21st. The spring start date 
for a 12-week accelerated course will be Monday, February 10th. The spring start date for a seven and a half week accelerated course will be Thursday, March 12th. With that said, Raymond will speak about the class formats. Yes, so at Prince George's Community College, we have several class formats that we're operating under currently. The key, as O2 mentioned, is the word ever changing. And I thank you all for your patience with Prince George's Community College and other education institutions as we shift and make changes to continue to support your, you and your students educationally uh, in the midst of this pandemic. We know we have moved a lot of things to online, so thank you so much uh, for your patience. While the college has not yet released information about how uh, class formats will be for the spring 2021 semester, I do wanna give you some insight on how we are operating uh, things in the fall 2020 semester. We have three learning modalities that uh, for students to take advantage of. We have online classes, which essentially are is learning at your own time or asynchronous. You'll have ac access to your course 24 seven via Blackboard. You will not have to log in at a specific time, but you will be responsible for all due dates and deadlines for your assignments, projects and tests. Remote classes are the most close that we're able to get to our in-person classes where you're actually learning in real time or synchronously. For our remote courses, you'll have the opportunity to log in. You will need to log in at the specified days and times of class, whereby you'll be able to hear lecture from your professor and interact with your classmates. You will also have access to learning material on Blackboard and will be bound to the deadlines and due dates for all projects and assignments. Our final modality for learning is online learning which is a combination of online, remote, and face-to-face -face instruction. You will be able to complete uh, work at a flexible pace, um, and there will be scheduled times for you to either come in on campus to meet with your faculty member and classmates, or um, to log in online in a synchronous fashion to meet with your classmates and your faculty member. All three of these formats do require uh, students to utilize Blackboard and submit assignments by the necessary due date. The only difference is O2 mentioned, if you are a new dual enrollment student, there is a requirement for you to have, uh, for you to complete at least six credits remotely or in hybrid format prior to being uh, able to participate in uh, our online uh, version of instruction. O2? I'm sorry, that's me. Uh, oversight of the dual enrollment program. I'm sorry, O2. <laughs> At this time, we're gonna have a short video that will showcase both the course coordinators and dual enrollment representatives who serve the 30 public, private, and charter high schools in Prince George's County. Enjoy, your dual enrollment lineup is next.
Thank you so thank you so much. Unfortunately, we did have some audio issue there, but we'll try to play it at the end. Uh, get the audio up so you can hear everyone's fun fact and how they introduce themselves. But at least you got to see the team, the coast um, coordinators, and also do the dual enrollment representatives that, again, will be um, working with you in the respective high schools throughout the county of Prince George's uh, in, in the public, private, and charter uh, schools. So we're really excited to serve you. Up next, Raymond will speak about the Prince George's Community College dual enrollment deadlines and contact information. Thank you, O2. Uh, as you were able to see the faces of some of the staff who make up the dual enrollment team at Prince George's Community College, if you miss your high school or you wanna know who represents your high school, we do encourage you to visit www.pgcc.edu slash coast in order to find your school's contact person for the dual enrollment program at Prince George's Community College. You'll also note that Prince George's Community College dual enrollment is staffed by 11 coast coordinators, a uh, couple of program directors, and staff from our early college access programs and outreach. So we thank them for their participation. That's the staff who you see responding to your chat in the, um, on the YouTube feed. PGCPS leadership of dual enrollment is uh, the Office of College Readiness, headed up by Ms. Olivia Pearson, Ms. Marty Blyther, and Mr. Alonzo Bailey, and their information is also listed there. We want to thank the staff uh, for their tireless uh, efforts with, for ensuring that we have a successful dual enrollment year. So I know you're wondering, everybody's sitting at the edge of their seat, wondering, when can I apply for the spring 2021 semester? And while I'm sure that many of you have asked that question, I want to address it in this slide. The application for spring 2021 will open on November 9th, and it will remain open until November 25th. Again, the application for spring 2021 dual enrollment season will open on November 9th and will close on November 25th. You're of the first to hear this information, so we encourage you to check your email and be in communication with your coast coordinator or dual enrollment representative so that you can ensure that you don't miss your deadline to participate in the spring 21 semester. O2. Thank you so much, Raymond. Well, at this time, um, we wanna kind of take a little pause here and see if you have any questions. So please, if you have any questions, share them so we can uh, try to answer them uh, during this time. So as a, as a reminder to you, we will have part two of our dual enrollment information session on October 29th, 2020. There is going to be a link to reg RSVP for this event emailed to you from mdcompletionact at pgcc.edu. And you will also have the opportunity uh, to RSVP through a link that's going to appear in the comment section of this broadcast. So Raymond, we do have a question. Uh, one of the questions was, how do I contact or communicate with my coast coordinator? That's a great question. So um, I would say the best way to do that is to speak with your professional school counselor and figure out who your coast coordinator is. If you already know who your coast coordinator is, make sure you reach out to them via email or some of our coast coordinators have already created uh, different platforms such as Google Classroom, um, Google Sheets, and, and, and other uh, formats uh, for people to sign up for appointments. Um, Raymond, I know that you do uh, a great system over there at Oxen Hill. Would you like to share anything else? Absolutely. I share on my Oxen Hill students. They've been invited to join my Google Classroom. I send numerous emails to my students as well. So. 
uh, uh, if you if you're interested in finding out again who your coast coordinator is, if you don't happen to be at one of our schools, again we encourage you to visit pgcc.edu/coast. There is actually an online form for you to complete, and it will be routed to the person who is actually representing your school, and they will respond to your inquiry within 72 business hours. We have so another, oh, another, qu another question came in, Raymond. We got two more questions here. Um, so they, they, they're coming in here. Um, the, other, the second question is, do you have to take the AccuPlacer test? That is a great question. So yes and no. <laughs> so I will speak on the AccuPlacer. And then Raymond, if you want to touch on the 3.0, is that OK? Absolutely. OK, so the AccuPlacer test, usually you have to take this test. You have to have a 2.5 GPA or higher to take the AccuPlacer test. Um, this is something that your, your respective high school is going to let you know if you qualify to take this test. They'll send you an email. Um, you'll come down to your testing uh, coordinator, um, uh, and they'll give you a, a time and a, and a session this is again if we were doing this in person in school since everything this spring semester is remote and online um, the accuplacer is not going to be given at, at this for this semester so with this said any student that has already taken the accuplacer and has passed it we will use and honor those scores any students also that have already previously taken the sat or act we can use those scores as well uh, but raymond will speak a little bit more about our new initiative, which is the 3.0 GPA. Yes, thanks, O2. Provided we are unable to provide AccuPlacer testing for the spring 2021 semester, we understand that there are some students who did not test last year or before everything shut down because of COVID. So we are allowing students who have a 3.0 or greater GPA and as rising juniors to register for courses that do not require tests, uh, AccuPlacer test scores, and do not reply, require prerequisites. So these are our courses that do not require uh, reading or writing proficiency. So students who are rising juniors have the ability to register for those courses. For students who are in 11th grade who have not yet uh, taken the AccuPlacer or have not taken the SAT or ACT, you do have the ability to also participate in dual enrollment uh, by having a 3.0 or greater GPA and having if you, and if you are in or you have completed English 11 and are in or have completed Algebra 2, we can uh, qualify you as reading proficient, writing proficient, and uh, uh, proficient in college level math. So there are opportunities for you to still participate in dual enrollment, even though we're not offering AccuPlacer. Oh, do we have any more questions? Yes, we have another question here. Um, when does the spring semester begin? Now, I know we said in the previous slide, January 21st, but I do want to apologize. We uh, were given an updated um, date, uh, which is January 19th. So that is when the spring semester uh, will begin. But again, um, when you're working with your representative, rather your dual enrollment re representative or your coach coordinator, they'll make sure that they let you know every step of the way. Um, one thing that we really pride ourselves with uh, this program is we're very big on email communication. So you will get plenty of emails to uh, inform you what's coming up. And again, when you're working with your coach coordinator and your dual enrollment representative, we'll be with you each step of the way. We have a great platform that you use, which is dual enroll, which is very easy to use. Um, and very easy to navigate. So we're able to communicate with each other through that as well. All right. Um, yes. I think we have one more question, Raymond, and then we can uh, move forward. Um, another so the question. question. I, the question I see is our class is online for the spring. As a reminder, we uh, are currently waiting for the college to decide our learning modalities for the spring semester. But it is likely that we will continue to operate some classes online, um, many more classes remotely, whereby you will have to log in to have lecture with your um, instructor at the designated day and time. 
via a uh, software that we ca use called Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. It is very similar to the Zoom platform that I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, are already familiar with. Uh, the platform Blackboard Collaborate Ultra is only available to students who are enrolled in that course at Prince George's Community College. So those are the, we, so we'll we'll update you on spring modalities. As O2 mentioned, there is a lot of information that goes up by email. So students, we want to encourage you to read the emails that go out in its entirety. There is a lot of information; things are ever changing and you are responsible for reading the emails. And if you'd like, share that information with your parents. We know that we've already sent out several emails to students and in, uh, in the next week, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be sending out even more emails to you uh, to help you prepare for the spring 2021 semester. Thanks, Raymond. At this time, I'll be speaking about the spring 2021 timeline. I hope you were able to join yesterday with Prince George's County Public Schools and their dual enrollment session that they had. The information session was very informative. And again, I hope you're able to join that uh, information session that they had yesterday. Um, as you see the check mark for the check mark number two is the session for today. Um, so again, we thank you for joining. And, and following and asking your questions and just being a part of the conversation. And hopefully uh, you are receiving some great information. Um, and again, any questions that you may have, feel free to reach out to your coast coordinator. And if you don't know who your coast coordinator is, reach out to your professional school counselor um, and or your dual enrollment representative. Um, going forward, October 9th to November 6th. And during this time, which is starting tomorrow, is what we call early advisement with your respective coast coordinator or dual enrollment representative. So at, during this time, coast coordinators are, uh, I know that a lot of us have already been um, speaking with students, but at this time they'll be um, reaching out to students, um, making sure that they know how to connect with them through Google Classroom and the other platforms that we use, email, um, we, some of us are able to use different uh, web platforms. So we'll make sure that uh, you are informed of what's going on um, to see if you want to participate uh, in the program. Um, October 29th, that's a very important uh, date uh, because that is our second part two of uh, the information sessions, which is getting started with dual enrollment. We don't want you to miss out. Please come back because not only are we going to have a great presentation, but we're going to have some breakout rooms with some breakout sessions that are going to be very informative and you don't want to miss it. November 9th to November 25th, just reiterating what Raymond said earlier, this is what we call the dual enrollment application window. And we're using a platform called dual enroll. So everything is online. Um, you're going to be able to choose your courses, speak with your course coordinator, your dual enrollment representative. Your counselors are going to be able to sign off uh, to make sure that they get their approval along with the principal and your family member. So the process is really straightforward. And again, you'll get a lot of this information via email and also with your uh, coast and or dual enrollment representative. Um, don't also forget that in January, this, there's uh, going to be the pay, payment deadline for the spring, and we'll make sure that we follow up with you as that time gets closer. Uh, because again, for students that have to pay for courses, um, there is a deadline, and we don't want students to um, uh, uh, not be able to take their courses because they didn't meet the deadline uh, with the payment. And then lastly, remember that um, January uh, 19th, that is when the spring semester 2021 academic term begins. We're so excited uh, and we, we are so uh, happy that you uh, 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 potentially want to be a part of dual enrollment. So with that said, I will pass it on to Raymond and he'll speak more about our second session. Yes, yeah, so I mentioned earlier we have a uh, part two and as O2 just mentioned, we have part two of our dual enrollment information session scheduled for October 29th. 
The link to RSVP is in the chat and, and on and scrolling across the screen. So we do encourage you to RSVP as soon as possible. At that particular session, we're going to be talking about the application and enrollment process for the spring 21 semester. You're going to learn the support services available for dual enrollment students. We're going to discuss setting up college systems, opportunities after dual enrollment, and you'll be able to learn even more about the dual enrollment dates uh, uh, and deadlines for participa participation in dual enrollment. Again, I want to encourage you to RSVP, RSVP for that event early so that we can uh, you can have priority on those breakout sessions that O2 mentioned that we're going to be hosting. So we want to thank you all for attending uh, tonight's information session. Um, I want to uh, express our gratitude to the student panel, those who are in the chat, and those who joined us live, that one, Art Nod, who joined us live. I want to send a expression of thanks to Professor Brandon Wallace, our fellow Coast and ECAP and O staff, who's in the background on the chat answering questions for us, to my co-presenter, Mr. O2 Obot II. Thank you so much, sir. And then we also want to send a special shout out to PGCC TV and the production team who's working behind the scenes, Marshall and George and Joe and Angela. Thank you all for making sure that we got this uh, our presentation and production uh, on YouTube and that we were able to use this uh, brand new service that the college has. And we also want to encourage you to follow Prince George's Community College Dual Enrollment on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at PGCC Dual Enroll. Follow us on Twitter tonight. Come on, blow our Twitter up. Add us, follow us. We'll follow you back. And you're going to receive a lot of information and updates about dual enrollment. Again, thank you so much for joining us. I don't know, O2, if you had any closing remarks for our audience tonight. Again, I just want to reiterate what Raymond said, um, that we are so happy that you came and joined us tonight. We hope that you were uh, fed some um, amazing information. We hope that, um, again, as Raymond said, you blow us up on Twitter. You let your friends and family know about the second session. Um, and the second se session is going to be way much, uh, I would say, better than this by leaps and bounds, even though this was great. Um, so again, we hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, please uh, have a safe night. Um, and again, we just have many thanks. We, we just really do appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all. Take care. Good night. Good night.